Hello my friends and followers, my viewers. I just hiked about an hour and a half. I'm in the mountains as you can see. It's beautiful summer still. And I don't know how some of the YouTubers do it. They look like perfect makeup and everything on the mountain and doing photo shoots or filming. I think they're not hiking actually. I think they're driving up there and doing that. Cause that's how I look when I'm hiking. So you can see into the valley. It's really beautiful, such a beautiful day. I'm so happy to take you along and just uh, to be reading to you from right here from the mountain range. So let's start with chapter 15 and 16. Chapter 15. Never do evil for anything in the world or for the love of any man. For one who is in need, however a good work may at times be purposely left undone or changed for a better one. This is not the omission of a good deed, but rather its improvement. Without charity, external work is of no value. But anything done in charity, will it ever so small or trivial, is entirely fruitful inasmuch as God weighs the love with which a man acts rather than the deed in itself. He does much who loves much. He does much who does a thing well. He does well who serves the common good rather than his own interests. Now, that which seems to be charity is oftentimes really sensuality for man's own inclination, his own will, his hope of reward, and his self-interest are motives seldomly absent. On the contrary, he who has true and perfect charity seeks self in nothing, but searches all things for the glory of God. Moreover, he envies no man because he desires no personal pleasure, nor does he wish to rejoice in himself. Rather, he desires the greater glory of God above all things. He ascribes to man nothing that is good, but attributes it wholly to God, from whom all things proceed as from the fountain, and in whom all the blessed shall rest their last end and fruition. If man had put a spark of charity, he would surely sense that all the things of earth are full of vanity. So this is what I've been teaching all of my viewers and followers and encouraging you to do in yoga. It's called karma yoga. That is to do charity, good deeds, good selfless deeds without expecting a reward in return and just for the community, for the sake of love, for the sake of kindness to the world. And if you can even, just for God. So when you do something for somebody, something good, seek to do it for God instead of that person. Don't judge that person and think that he's not worthy for a good deed to be done. See God in everyone and then do it for God. In one of the scriptures, Jesus had says, Anything that you do for the least of mine, you have done for me. And he even said at one point that he will reward people for visiting the poor, helping the poor, visiting sick, or even imprisoned people. And he will say, you visited me. So see in everybody God and do it for the sake of God and to love him and to show him without any expectation of even a thank you, of a reward or anything. That is true karma yoga. For example, Mother Teresa has shown this kind of karma yoga perfectly. She always did things selflessly without expecting a thank you or anything in return. And that's one of the saints that we really have as an example. And 
I mean, who doesn't love Mother Teresa and looks up to her? Let's keep on reading with chapter 16. Until God ordains otherwise, a man ought to bear patiently whatever he cannot correct in himself and in others. Consider it better thus, perhaps to try your patience and to test you, for without such patience and trial your merits are of little account. Nevertheless, under such difficulties, you should pray that God will consent to help you bear them calmly. If, after being admonished once or twice, a person does not amend, do not argue with him, but commit the whole matter to God, that his will and honor may be futured in all his servants, for God knows well how to turn evil to good. Try to bear patiently with the defects and infirmities of others, whatever they may be, because you also have many fault which others must endure. If you cannot make yourself what you would wish to be, how can you bend others to your will? We want them to be perfect, yet we do not correct our own faults. We wish them to be severely correct or corrected, yet we will not correct ourselves. Their great liberty displeases us, yet we would not be denied what we ask. We would have them bound by laws yet we will allow ourselves to be restrained in nothing. Hence, it is clear how seldom we think of others as we do of ourselves. If all were perfect, that should we have to suffer from others for God's sake. But God has so ordained that we may learn to bear with one another burdens, for there is no man without fault, no man without burden no man sufficient to himself nor wise enough. Hence, we must support one another, console one another, mutually help, counsel, advice. For the measure of every man's virtue is best revealed in time of adversity. Adversity that does not weaken a man, but rather shows what he is. So, we're so quick to condemn others and want others to change, but we are not ready to change ourselves or to take up responsibilities for our own action. So we ought to change that. We should ought to, we should ought to change ourselves and always try to help others to change, but not by condemning them or, you know, by murmuring at them or anything we support them best by loving them and to truly understand where they're coming from they have defects we have defects and everybody has defects but we can really help one another by supporting one another and we will never change anybody by murmuring by hating by just trying to change them, by pressing them, manipulating them. We can only change others softly, gently, and with love. And we should go ahead and change ourselves before anybody else can be changed. And we should also see it as a trial. See, we have to understand and go and bear each other's faults. It's a test, it's a trial. If you only have peace in your life, of course you will be patient. But how about if not everything goes your way, if other people do not do what you want them to do, or they displease you, can you then stay patient? That is true, patient. And it shows you very fast where somebody is. If everything doesn't go their way, how do they react? How are they? Can they keep a good spirit and bear with one another? Or are they flipping out? You see, if you are truly connected to God and in the love of God, you will still do mistakes. Don't get me wrong. And you might lose still your patience. But in general, you can bear with another, help with one another, and don't condemn others for their faults because you will see your own faults that are so so many. I have so many faults myself and I need to take responsibility for myself and so do you. And 
sometimes I have to think about how many people are bearing with me suffering under my little quirks and shortcomings. We always think of the other ones that bother us, but what about us? What about the people that have to endure us? You see, and God stays so patient with us. We can change. Let us change first and let's love one another. Love is always the key, always the solution to change anything or anybody. Love them. So I wish you a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this wonderful reading from the Imitation of Christ, from this beautiful view, from this beautiful mountain, and from this beautiful trip. See you next week again for another reading.